I'm going to show you how to create this application launchpad. It's going to let you create groups of programs or documents just by dragging them out of the Windows File Explorer and then dropping them into this application. Now, this has got its own little launchpad window and for each file a button is created showing both the file name and its associated icon. And to launch a file, you just click the button. I'm Hugh, and this is the first lesson in a short series explaining how to program an application launchpad using the C Sharp language. So, why would you need a launchpad? Well, personally, I often need to get at a certain set of programs or documents that may be scattered across my hard disk. For example, I often store ebooks and documents in a variety of different directories and subdirectories. And in order to get at them, I have to, well, I have to hunt around all those directories using the Windows File Explorer. It would be much more convenient to keep all those documents in one group, as I've done here. Now, I'm old enough to remember when Windows used to group together programs very much in this way, using a tool called the Program Manager. The Program Manager in Windows 3 let you launch applications by clicking icons. The icons were arranged in little groups, whereas in the modern version of Windows, you have to navigate your way through a complicated menu system. And the program icons are scattered all over your desktop, not arranged in groups. My application launchpad gives you an alternative, a way to create named groups of files, much more in the way that the old program manager used to do. Before trying to do anything too clever, my first aim is to figure out how to drag a file from the Windows Explorer and launch it from my program. So in my first project, I won't try to drag and drop multiple files or create buttons with icons. That will all come later. So in Visual Studio, I start off by creating a new project file, new project, uh, Windows Forms app, I'll wait for it to come up, Windows Forms app, and um, next. Now I could give it name here and select a folder, but to save time, I'm just going to click next and create and uh, wait for it to start up the form. Now I need to drag on a text box and a button. So text box here, resize that a bit and a button, put it underneath. And now I need to set the text box as a drop target so it will accept files that I drag and drop from the Windows File Explorer. I can do that in the form designer by setting the text box property. You can see the properties over here and finding allow drop and setting that to true. Or I could go into the code constructor and do it and I'll just show you how to do that now. So here I am in the constructor. I'm just going to set this property in code text box one allow drop allow drop equals true. So it doesn't really matter whether you do it in code or just by clicking the property in the form designer. Now I next need to handle a couple of drag and drop events and let me go back to the designer. I'll select the text box and I'll use the events panel. Let's just resize it a bit. So click the events panel and I need a drag enter and a drag drop. So up I scroll to find them, drag, drop, creates an empty event handler, and what was the other one I said? Drag, enter, drag, enter. Now, let me go away and write some actual code for these. Uh, and here it is. So what exactly is going on here? Well, the drag, enter method runs when the mouse pointer moves over the text box. The event E is automatically sent to this method and my code uses its data.getDataPresent method to see if this represents a file drop event. If so, I set its effect property so that the text box can be used as a drop target. 
and next the drag drop event occurs and this method runs. Here e dot data might contain an array of file names if I happen to select multiple files when I dragged from the Windows File Explorer. I'll deal with multiple files in a later version of this project. For now, I just need the first one, the first file, at index 0. I convert it to a string, that's the path to the file, and that will be the full path to the file that's been dropped, and I show that in the text box. And finally, I want to be able to launch the file itself. Well, let me add a click event handler to the button, same process as before, back into the form, and I select the button. I just double click to set up its click event handler. And now, once again, just to save time, I'll go away and I'll write the code for this event. And here it is. If you followed my previous lessons showing how to create a disk browser, this code should look pretty familiar. If you haven't watched those lessons, I'd suggest you do so in order to understand how a file is launched using process start. Okay, so let's see how it all works. I'll run the program and up pops my form with this uh, text box here. So I need to drop something from the Windows Explorer, File Explorer onto it. So here I just get a document drop it on, you can see it puts in the full path to that document, it happens to be a PDF document, and I click the button to load up the document. And there you are, your 1931 guide to the Lionel Strongfort Institute of uh, Physical Perfection. And uh, that's just one example of how you could load a file uh, or a document. So, I've now got the basis of an application launch pad. Of course, there's much more to do yet. I want to create a button for each file, not just show its name in a text box. I want to be able to drop multiple files all in one go. And I want to show the icon for each file type on its button. In addition to that, I want to be able to save my launch pad configuration so that the buttons will automatically be reloaded when I next run the program. I'll show you how to do all that and more in some other videos. Thanks for watching. Be sure you don't miss any lessons in this series by subscribing to my channel so that you'll get a message to tell you when I've uploaded a new lesson. Just click the subscribe button and the bell and I'll see you again soon.